Hey guys and welcome to unitycookie.com. My name is Alex Telford and today I'll be showing you how you can combine multiple materials into a single material with the use of vertex colors and C sharp. Now you can also use JavaScript for this and we won't only be focusing on just changing colors, you can also use this technique to change textures as well. Let's go ahead and get started. Now here I have the scene that we saw in the image with several trees and I've for now turned off all image effects and shadows. Now the reason I have done this is so that we can see that in fact when we play this that it is only using a single draw call. Okay so what we want to do first is we want to write a script that will update our vertex colors of any object that's attached to it. We'll be doing this in C Sharp but you can also do this in JavaScript. This script is available on the Unity script reference. I will be basically using almost exactly the same as what we have here with a few modifications. So this is the mesh.colors that we'll be using. You can see that this is a C Sharp. If you use JavaScript, you can switch over and use that one there if you prefer. For now, I will use C Sharp as I quite like to use C Sharp. First thing I'm going to do is create a new C Sharp script. So this one here, I'm going to call this update verts. Let's open this up in Mono Develop. Great, so the first thing I want to do is be able to have this script update in edit mode. We only need to run it once, and then once we run, we can actually disable the script and we, our game will continue to use the exact same colors that have left, been left on it. This will make a little more sense in a moment. So we'll type in execute in edit mode, and that will allow us to execute this script within the edit mode, so within our 3D viewport. We won't be bothering about using the start, we're only going to worry about the update. Now you could use the start if you like, but it is fairly redundant for this type of script. The first thing I want to do is I want to create a new color picker. And this will allow us to select a color within our script. So we assign this a public, so it's a public variable. The type is going to be color, the name is going to be new color, and its default value is going to be gray. So if I save this, we reload this within Unity here, we can assign this to our material and you can see we get a color picker. So we can in fact just go ahead and pick the color that's already on it and that would be the color we will be using. Let's go ahead and write the update function. The first thing we want to do is get the mesh data. So I'll write a comment there, get mesh data, and we'll get the mesh data from the mesh, the shared mesh. So we go mesh, so we're getting a new variable of type mesh. We're going to call it mesh. We're going to get the mesh filter and take the shared mesh. Now this here will update every single prefab that is connected, or every object using this prefab. If you want this to affect only single objects, you will need to change this from shared mesh to mesh. Now this will produce an error, but once you disable the script, it will keep the last used vertex colors and will work fine. Okay, so next thing we want to do is we want to create an array for the vertex colors. So we do this by creating a new array. We're going to call this colors and we'll create a new color with the mesh.vertices.length. The reason we do this is because we want to make sure that we will be able to assign a new color for every single vertice. Because these are vertex colors, we need to make sure every single one is overridden and we need to create this list before we can assign it as you can't let's simply assign a single a single vertex next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and loop through the vertices so i'll start with a integer i of zero so that we can start at the value zero and we'll then loop through until we get to the end of the length so our while loop is quite straightforward so while i is less than the mesh dot vertices dot length we will set a new vertex color, so we'll set the colors i, so whichever vertex we're at, we're going to be setting this to equal new color, which is our color that we set up here, which is by default gray. Finally, remember to increment your i, otherwise you will end up with an infinite loop and it will crash. Finally, what we need to do is we need to apply the array of colors to our mesh colors. Let's go ahead and try this out. Okay, so there we go. We can now adjust our colors in Unity. Now, the reason that we are adjusting our colors, just to point out, is because that these materials are using a special shader. 
If I just open up my shaders, see I have three shaders here. The one that I'm focusing on is going to be vertex color shader. If I open this up, you can see that this is a simple surface shader that only has an input of shininess to control our specularity and it has vertex colors, so you're using vertex colors. If you have followed our surface shader series, you'll be able to understand how this works. If you are unsure of how to write shaders, we do have a full series. We have two th full series currently on Unity Cookie with another one soon to be released. I also have another shader here, Flat Vertex. This one here has no lighting in it and is not a surface shader and it will only go ahead and just return the vertex colors. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that one looks like. So these are the vertex colors that we currently have. So you can see as I adjust this, it's only adjusting the vertex colors. Let's go ahead and adjust this to look the same as the other tree. And you can see that it's done there. Okay, that is fantastic. So you can now use this to create as many different trees as you want. However, if we go ahead and we duplicate this a couple of times, you can see when we update this, we update all of them at once. So what we can do is we can come into Monitor Develop and on our C Sharp file, we can change this from shared mesh to mesh. If we save this and reload this in Unity, you can see we can now change the color of one mesh at a time. Now it will create an error saying use shared mesh instead because we're in using a mesh doing edit mode. So this is fine, this is just a warning. This is We're only doing this so we can view it. What happens now if we uncheck this on all of these, you can see that it is in fact going to stay the same colors. So we can no longer update this. It is now a disabled script. But if we go into the game and hit play, I'll just move my camera so that we can view this a little easier. So if we go into the game and hit play, you'll see that we do in fact keep those vertex colors, but we are still within a single draw call. So these objects are separate. They are using the same mesh data. They are unlinked, as you can see right there, which is fine. But they are using the same draw call, which is the most important thing. That makes it far more optimized when we are using this. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. This uh, script will allow you to change the vertex colors and you can use them within your shader. Now, previously I just said that you can use this to change textures as well. And this is true, you can in fact do this. And I'll quickly throw it on a quick demo. I don't have any textures assigned or UV maps to these, but what I can do is I can show you a shader that I've created, and it is not that one, it is the nine optimized. Okay, so this one here allows us to lerp between them. So you can see I have down here fixed for text, and I have imported in the vertex color.x. This technique does involve shader writing. So what we can do is we can take in our vertex colors with a semantic color. We can pass them to our fragment program. And then in the fragment program, we can check what a variable is. And if it is, if vertex color dot X is greater than one, um, actually this one here is currently incorrect. It should be greater than 0 0.5. It will use this texture. Otherwise, we will use this texture. So if I save this and reload, we can go ahead and try this on the model. Okay, there we go. So you can see now that I've assigned this. I have two different textures assigned to the shader. And because of the colors, it will control how this works. So if I just enable this, we go down to red. Let's make this one here a low red value. There you go. So you can see now as we pass by the um, midpoint, we can switch the textures. Now do bear in mind, this is not the most optimized way to do this. Uh, if you have been watching the series, you will know that uh, everything in the fragment function is repeated once per pixel per frame. It is much better to do any calculations like that in the vertex function, which is much faster, and then pass the minimal amount possible to the fragment function. This, this little quick tip is only on creating how to use this technique to minimize draw calls. You can see we now have the shader set up. If I uncheck that script now, and change this back to static, and we go play. We have one draw call, and we are using multiple textures. We are using um, different colors here. We're using vertex colors to control this. 
and that is working great. So if you want to expand on this and make this work a little more, what you can do is you can actually take, instead of taking in a color variable, you can take in several different float variables. You can then compress these into a single float. I'll do this in notepad so I don't have to worry about auto completion. So we have R, G, B, and A. Within these, we have a zero dot or a one dot. It is a, it's only ever going to be zero or one, the first number. And then we have numbers after that. So this can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six. These are numbers that we can change as much as we want. You can also go further than this. You can go to the fourth component. However, I found this to be unreliable. But you can actually put several integers into these, and then within your in your shader, you can read these back out into their integers using the two uh, the two functions floor and frac is the functions that are much uh, very helpful for that. We won't go into depth of scripting here, but I'm just giving you an idea of how you can use this. And you can use this to basically have anywhere up to 12 different variables um, being passed over from your script into your shader, and this will be on a per mesh basis. And they'll all still be able to shrink into the same draw call. So I hope this has been helpful, I hope this has been insightful. If you have any questions at all, if you want to learn more about how, I, how you can pass other variables other than colors into your shader, by all means let me know and I can follow this up. If I do want to keep this as short as possible. So that is it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. My name is Alex Telford and you are on unitycookie.com.